Howdy folks, and welcome back to World of Warships with Rear Admiral Jingles. I have no idea how many takes it's going to take to get this episode done, uh, because I have a very small and energetic kitten running around the man cave. Oh, there she is. <laughs> so yeah, getting videos done for the next couple of days is going to be interesting. And there she is again. I'd better see what she wants. I'll be right back. <laughs> okay, we're all good. Uh, she's sleeping in my lap again. You might even be able to hear repairing if you're listening on headphones. But anyway, enough about kittens. This, believe it or not, is Flamu. In the work in progress, as you can tell by the overlay, Tier 9 Soviet battleship, the Sovetsky Soyuz. I realise the name says Shakenine. Uh, this is one of his alt accounts. Which is kind of appropriate. Shakenine is a toxin common to potatoes. <laughs> so you can say a lot of things about Flamu, but what you can't say is that he doesn't have a sense of humour. So, the Sovetsky Soyuz. Not a fantasy ship. Not completely. Three of them were planned. These are the Project 23 battleships. Construction began in the 1930s. None of them were completed, due to a number of factors. Um, first... Well, it was unlikely that even if they had been completed, that they would have been particularly good, because at the time, the Soviet plate armour industry was incapable of making cemented armour greater than 9.1 inches thick. So they wouldn't have been impressively armoured battleships by any standard, even if they were going to be as big as, or planned to be as big as the Yamato. And they certainly wouldn't have had the same firepower, not even the same firepower as the planned Montana class of US Navy battleships, as they only had nine 16 inch guns. The Montana obviously was going to have 12 and the Yamato was equipped with monstrously large 18.1 inch guns. Of course the other thing that kind of put of a break on development of these ships was World War II. In what was almost certainly a very wise decision the Soviet arms industry came to the conclusion oh she's off again <laughs> I warned you, these videos are going to be interesting for the next few days at least. Uh, the Soviet arms industry decided that all of this steel plate they had lying around was going to be of much better use building tanks now to defend the Soviet Union rather than building battleships three or four years from now when there may no longer be a Soviet Union around to defend. So, you've probably noticed that Flamu's taken a couple of pot shots at the buffalo tucked into relative safety around the side of the island over there. The thing is, with the cyclone closing in, that buffalo is in a fantastic spot to provide radar coverage for the centre of the map. And American cruisers, tucked in like ticks on a dog's back around the safety of an island, are just an absolute nightmare to remove. And the captain of the first buffalo has clearly read the US Navy cruiser captain's manual. The captain of the second buffalo, however, Clearly has the same idea about radar and anti-aircraft coverage as the first buffalo. But he's been spotted, he's been hit, and he's still got quite a bit of open water to cover before he makes it into the relative safety of the island ahead of him. And at a distance of 13 kilometres, he's not quite inside the danger zone range of these nine 16-inch guns, but yeah, he's close enough. Player 2 enters the match, a Bismarck firing high explosive. I thought at first we'd give him the benefit of the doubt that those were his secondaries, but not even the Bismarck secondaries have that kind of range. No, that is a high explosive spamming German battleship. So probably not a great threat. The second Buffalo has just been sunk by torpedoes fired by the Fletcher on Flamu's team, and that's when the first Buffalo re-enters the battle. We may have been overestimating this guy because he doesn't appear to have gotten the memo about sailing broadside onto battleships in open water. And while he wasn't within the around about 12 kilometre danger zone of these Soviet battleship 16 inch guns, and so only got a little bit of a love tap, he has made it in a concealment behind the island. Now you'd think, having gotten away with it, he'd stay in concealment behind the island. Yeah, you'd think that. And you'd be wrong. So just the one citadel. <laughs> one penetration and five over-penetrations. 
Um, I'm not quite sure what he's trying to do. Is he? Is he trying to cap in a heavy cruiser with a carrier in the game? <laughs> I think he's just decided. Nope. The flame is ready to fire, but he's waiting for this guy to straighten out. Yeah, there it is. Shots out. Oh, that's another paddling. <laughs> <laughs> very very wisely stopped shooting so he has at least managed to go undetected for the moment but there are torpedo bombers on the way and they've spotted him again special mention in this particular battle has to be given to the Saipan on Flamu's team his name's Finden and I thought I'd heard the name before he's actually one of Flamu's subscribers I know I've seen him in chat on Flamu's live streams. So the torpedoes missed, but they did force the buffalo to sail a very, very predictable course. And he's lucky he's as far away as he is, and at this kind of range, the questionable accuracy of Soviet battleship guns means that he only takes another 2,400 damage. He's desperately trying to make it back behind that island. If those torpedoes would just let him... Flamu holds his finger up to the wind, takes his best guess, unleashes another nine-gun salute. Ah! <laughs> the buffalo, thinking it was safe to fire because he was about to make it back into the cover of the island, was sort of right and sort of wrong. And 42,000 health later, he's finally made it back into safety. Uh, where he should have stayed <laughs> the first time around. So that was kind of amusing, and hopefully the buffalo captain learned something from that. Meanwhile, our friend in the Bismarck, still sitting broadside on at pretty much everything, still firing high explosive at everything, and I'm assuming, with his damage control on cooldown from extinguishing one fire, because hey, in for a penny, in for a pound, good things always come in threes, has finally started moving. You really kind of wish you had American battleship guns when shooting at a target like that, just for the accuracy. But, hey, throw enough shit at the wall. <laughs> Some of it's gonna stick. Okay, let's take a look at the caps. Flamu's team hold Bravo in the middle of the map. The enemy team have just taken Charlie, and there is an enemy Fletcher threatening to take Alpha. The Fletcher does have a Minsk, a Miyoko, a Seattle, and a Buffalo closing in on him. The four of them should be able to take care of a Fletcher, particularly since two of them have radar. So Flamu turns his attention towards Charlie, where the bulk of the enemy team appear to be congregating and attempting to push through the map to the west towards Bravo. Fendan in the Saipan has just managed to get himself a kill. Thanks to him, the enemy team are now in a buffalo-free zone, and given that there is a cyclone closing in, and visibility is starting to drop, that's one less radar on the enemy team. Now the Masashi down there could become a problem, although not for a while yet because visibility is dropping, and he's very soon going to go undetected. This monarch also not going to be a huge problem. Tier 8 battleship, sailing broadside on, firing high explosive at tier 7 battleships. My only real surprise here was that he doesn't also have the survivability expert skill. I'm pretty sure that's a Bismarck firing high explosive back at him, so, you know, there's a lot of it around. Now, there, uh, yep, there are the torpedoes. There was an Akatsuki down there as well. And there he is. Okay, Flamu's going to need a couple of things to happen here. Either that monarch dies, or visibility drops even further, and the monarch just goes undetected. So that's nice. Next, that Akatsuki either needs to die or stay behind the island so he doesn't spot Flamu. And he was good enough to die when requested, although he was also dropping a smokescreen, so he probably wouldn't have spotted Flamu again anyway. But the important thing is that Flamu has managed to stay undetected. The bad news is that the enemy team have managed to capture Alpha and Bravo. A Seattle, Buffalo, Miyoko and Minsk between them were unable to prevent it, but they're in the process of reversing it. And with any luck they can take care of the Fletcher in the process. 
Now, you may notice there's an awful lot of aircraft overhead, and they're not all enemy. Flammy's using his own catapult fighter consumable, and the friendly carrier is being very generous with his own fighter aircraft consumable, so that's a fairly large no-fun zone for the enemy carrier. You might also notice that with visibility down to 8 kilometers, Flamu keeps getting hard spotted. There it is again. Which means that there's something within 8 kilometers that keeps catching glimpses of his battleship around the corner of islands and smoke screens. Let's hope it's not the Masashi or anything with torpedoes. Spoiler alert, it's neither. This is a tier 9 battle, which means that somebody has to be unfortunate enough to be tier 7. And there he is, the Nuevo de Julio. It is a good ship. Originally Brooklyn class cruisers built for the US Navy in World War II, and this one transferred to the Argentine Navy after the war. Oh, wow. <laughs> that was a paddling. Um, it is a good ship. It's one of the those rarest of beasts, a tier 7 cruiser that actually has a heel, and it's a good heel. But, um, well, the late great Admiral Akbar had a thing or two to say about cruisers trying to repel firepower of this magnitude. <laughs> How much do you think that guy shit his pearly pink panties when he came around the corner and saw a Sovetsky Soyuz seven kilometers away from him? <laughs> Torpedoes from the enemy Shikaku shot down a couple of his aircraft. Flamu, of course, saving his damage control um, to not put out the fires set by the doomed Nuevo de Julio. It was only a matter of time, and instead using the damage control when he had more than one thing to worry about, as well as the fire from the Nuevo de Julio. At least one of those torpedoes also knocked out his engine, although neither caused any flooding. But if they had, the damage control would have taken care of everything. Quick note, ooh, actually, no, we'll come back to that in a moment. The Masashi has just entered the fight. Now this, of course, is the premium little sister of the Tier 10 Yamato. It's basically a Yamato in all but name, and all but matchmaking. It's got the Yamato's armor, it's got the Yamato's hit points, it's got the Yamato's guns. The guns don't share the same accuracy as the Yamato, but at this kind of range they don't really need to. And of course, the Masashi has legendarily bad anti-aircraft protection, which means that Findan in the Saipan is all over him. However, these 18.1-inch guns are not to be taken lightly. Bit of an air battle breaking out overhead as both teams' carriers try to nail each of these battleships. Flamu, severely outgunned here. He only has six 16-inch guns that he's able to bring the bear on the target unless he wants to expose far too much broadside and get himself deleted by the Masashi's guns. However, the Masashi, like the Yamato, has a fairly large weakness. The cheek armour behind the bows, kind of just underneath the turrets. In fact, more or less exactly, well, there. <laughs> oh, that was glorious. <laughs> Five citadels, yes. So top tip, if you're in a Yamato or a Masashi, don't try to angle your armour. <laughs> Just point your bows straight in towards the enemy, because if you do try to angle your armour like that, uh, you can be citadeled from the front by pretty much anything with a 16-inch gun or better, and you're a tier 9 or 10 battleship, so you have to kind of expect most of your opposition uh, to have that kind of firepower. Now, since we've been watching this battle from Flamu's perspective, we could be forgiven for thinking that the battle was actually going fairly well. And you'll be appalled to hear, although not surprised to hear, that it very definitely is not. Flamu is in the process of capturing Charlie. There's a Bismarck on his team, miles away, who's attempting to prevent the capture of Alpha and Bravo simultaneously. And is basically being focused down by everything that's left on the enemy team that isn't the carrier. The carrier is going for Flamu, because this is what happens when you're alone and isolated and there's a carrier in play. They do their level best to make your life a misery. 
Now, Flamu's medium range AA is fairly strong, but it's not strong enough to prevent a strike even from a tier 8 aircraft carrier, like the Shikaku on the enemy team, who, it has to be said, is going after Flamu in particular for a far more pertinent reason. He's about to get his ass handed to him. <laughs> oh, that's gonna sting. Um, Flamu, of course, being supported by Findan in the Saipan, who keeps dropping the fighter consumable on top of him every chance he gets. And the enemy carrier, of course, throwing everything but the kitchen sink right back at Flamu. And Flamu kind of has to, well, take it and keep taking it until he can eventually sink this carrier. Because what is the counterplay here? You're under attack from an aircraft carrier in this kind of situation. You hit, you're burning, and he's going to keep hitting you, and you're going to keep burning. What's the counterplay? Because if this was a battleship versus battleship brawl, you'd see them angling against each other. If it was a cruiser versus cruiser brawl, you'd see them attempting to outmaneuver and use concealment and switch ammunition types and so on and so on. If you're being hunted by a destroyer, um, you'd use the I am detected indicator to try to estimate when to vary your course and speed and when to use your consumables. But if you're under attack from a carrier, well, I suppose the counterplay is hope he's bad. <laughs> um, oh, wait, no. Just dodge. That was it. Yeah. Anyway, he's no longer... Un well, he is actually still under attack from the carrier, despite the fact that he's just sunk him, because the carrier still has some rocket planes in the air. So he still kind of has to take it for a while. And, of course, the Bismarck has been sunk um, by the enemy Nelson, I believe, who is just a Tier 7 battleship, but is armed with 16-inch guns. And there is also an Alsace. Sorry, I have to make sure I mispronounce it, just in case there are any Frenchmen listening. The Alsace, <laughs> that famous French battleship named after the Italian fashion designer, Gianni Alsace, yes. Um, so, yeah, the Alsace, of course, is... I, I can't get it wrong all the time. <laughs> Come on, give me a break. A Tier 9 battleship as well, with some seriously good guns. Armour, not great, but she's a fast ship. And the Nelson, as we mentioned, Tier 7 doesn't have great armour, does have a fantastic heal, and Flamu still, even after sinking the carrier, getting hassled by the carrier. That's right, kids. When you're playing with carriers, the fun never ends. <laughs> Shots out at the Alsace, who's firing high explosive. Oh, citadel Fantastic. The high explosive from the Alsace back there. Under the circumstances, not a terrible idea, because... Well, Flamu is angled. You know, it's not always a bad idea to be firing high explosive when you're in a battleship. It is, a, however, a very, very bad idea to be sailing broadside onto something armed with 16-inch guns, regardless of what kind of ship you're in. Boom, headshot! <laughs> oh dear. Oh, but Jingles, he was sailing broadside onto Flamu because Findan was coming in from directly ahead with torpedo bombers. Actually, uh, no, go back and freeze frame it. He was even broadsiding the torpedoes. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, with around about a minute to go, that really just leaves the Nelson. And you really have to kind of feel for this poor guy because he is just a tier 7 battleship. And yes, he might have the same number and calibre of guns as Flamu here in the Sovetsky Soyuz. And he definitely has a better heel, but he's just tier 7. And with 25mm of bow armour plate, and he'd be overmatched by 15-inch guns, and these are not 15-inch guns. His speed is terrible, so he can't run away, although running away isn't really going to win him the match. There isn't enough time for him to convert his two capture points into enough of a points lead. The match is going to be over in less than a minute. And even if running away were an option, he would never be able to go undetected because one, the Sovetsky Soyuz is faster than him, and two, there's still a Saipan in play, which can keep him permanently spotted from the air. And the Nelson's mediocre anti-aircraft firepower isn't going to provide enough of a deterrent to stop that from happening. And of course, well, that 25mm of bow plating means these guns can do that to you from the front. The Nelson is at least trying, 
But you have to be realistic here. There's no way the Nelson can win this fight. In fact, the only way the Nelson could even draw this fight was if he managed to ram Flamu. And Flamu's kind of anticipated this. He's slowed down. He's in no rush to get any closer to the Nelson. The Nelson's the one that needs to get close to him. And he might be able to finish him off with this salvo. And he doesn't. Not quite enough. Rocket attack went in on the Nelson. Didn't really do any appreciable damage. 16-inch gun salvo didn't do enough damage. And it looks like, against all of the odds, the Nelson's going to survive purely by virtue of the timer running out. So well done to him. I mean, well done to Flamu, obviously. 317,000 damage. 777,000 credits. Uh, no achievements. You can't actually earn them on test ships. So no Kraken, you know, nothing like that. But it goes without saying that Flamu had a good game. The Nelson did exceptionally well, finishing second on his team. In a Tier 7 battleship in a Tier 9 game, coming second only to the Alsace over there, who also played well and must have had some kind of very unfortunate pants-on-head moment at the worst possible time. And well done, of course, to Findan. The Tier 8 Saipan player, who provided Flamu with such great air support all the way throughout that match, and was rewarded by finishing second on the winning team. Well, it's almost two o'clock in the morning now, which means the kitten has woken up and wants to play. <laughs> so, ah, oh, the joys of parenthood. <laughs> so I'm going to have to knock it on the head there. Flamu, thank you for sending that one in. They're always good. Everybody else, hope you enjoyed it. And as always, take care, and I'll catch you next time.